list of public figures speak, including CEOs, there's only so much soul searching that you can reasonably expect. Not many chief executives are willing to really kind of be tough on themselves on national TV. That's why it was so refreshing when we spoke to Marcus Lemonis, the CEO of Camping World Holdings, back in June. This company, which sells new and used RVs, along with various related accessories and services, had seen its stock get obliterated over the previous six months. The result was one of the toughest, uh, candid self-assessments we've ever seen from a CEO on the show. Lamonas talked about how he'd made some rookie mistakes transitioning from a private company to a public one. Raked himself over the calls, actually, for not doing a better job of communicating the reason for his recent acquisition of Gander Mountain, a hunting and fishing retailer. While the stock got a nice and, I think, deserving boost after that interview, it's kind of floundered since then for a couple of months. So when a viewer called in about Camping World not long ago, I said, we need to hear from Marcus Lamonas, who, by the way, and I think this is really probably the most important thing, just purchased 25,000 shares on Friday. I think that's the reason why the stock went higher. So it's such a great of confidence. Let's check in with Mark Lamonis. He's the chairman and CEO of Camping World Holdings and the host of CNBC's The Profit. Find out why he's so bullish about his company's prospects. Mr. Lamonis, welcome back to Man Money. Right, Good to see you, Marcus. Have a seat. Everybody. Thank you. Uh, people, uh, CEOs can sell for any number of reasons. Sometimes it's because of estate planning. Sometimes they want to do the right thing with taxes. They only buy for one reason. They think that their stock's going to go higher. You just gave quite a, comp a vote of confidence when you bought. You know, uh, we were in this weird period because I had sold several months back. I mean, almost, I think, six months back. And I had this window to buy. We're now in a blackout period right. as of today. Friday, I wanted to get into the market, and I set up the bid, and I ended up only with 25,000 shares. I was kind of disappointed. Well, you know, you know there are buyers. I mean, the stock, is, it, it, once, there are many people who want to be in the stock. Yep. And then I think there are people who don't grasp your longer-term vision. So I'm not going to be constrained by the spreadsheet. Yep. I want you to tell our viewers about the re one of the reasons why you probably want to buy is you are, think you can double in the next five years, which we'll, is we'll incredible. Do we'll do it. We'll double. You okay. And that that will mean what for profitability only? Look, at the end of the day, we are an RV company first and foremost. And our number one asset are our customers that sit in our good SAM file. That's the most important part of our business. But in order to grow that file and to grow the annuity part of our business, which is good SAM, we have to really grow our platform. We're able to make dealership acquisitions anywhere between one and four times EBITDA. That's trailing EBITDA, not adjusted like public companies right. like to do, not some pro right, forma. Right, right. The real number. We provide a good exit strategy for a lot of dealers. And as I looked at where this company needed to go, doubling the size of the dealership footprint was really the only option. And Gander Outdoors was really the, the, the spark that really takes us there. Can you talk about the Good Sam program, which many people may not be familiar yeah. with, and how Gander can be used to generate huge numbers of leads? Yeah. So the Good Sam file and the Good Sam club are an important part of our business. Over $100 million of our EBITDA comes from the Good Sam business itself. And essentially, it's people that want to save money on campgrounds, camping, uh, all hunting, fishing, camping equipment, but they also want to buy roadside assistance, which is similar to AAA for RVers. They want to get a warranty. They want to have a credit card and enjoy all the benefits. We sell all of those affinity products. And so as people walk in the front door, well, those are fresh sets of eyes and fresh sets of people to be able to sell the products and services to. Now, the analysts are kind of caught up with this idea that you did lower EBITDA, but you say point blank, look, you strategically and deliberately tried to de-emphasize the high dollar, low margin business that wasn't doing well for Camping World. It's the motorhome business. Right. The high dollar, low turn, low margin business. And when I look at our partners today, uh, particularly I look at our relationship with Thor, we're right. about 25% of their business. And they're about business. to report this week. Yeah, about 25% of their business. We have a really good congruence with understanding where the funnel is for the consumer. It's the entry-level towable where the first-time buyers come to market. And as people come into the market, our job is to stair-step them up. The motorhome business is good, but it never, Jim, it never recovered, never recovered from 2008. Never. I mean, now, uh, you should talk about, I thought, the parts and services numbers and the increase in finance and insurance are gigantic. Yeah, they're, they're big, but it's deceiving in a way, right? Our okay. service and parts numbers are large because they serve the installed base. So there's close to 10 million RVers in the marketplace. Okay. And so people say, well, the business has cyclicality to it. It does, but it serves the installed base. Where I start to get okay. a little nervous okay. Okay. is when you start to think about things that could affect this business. Do gas prices affect the business? Right. A lot of people to, worried. To a degree. Do interest right. rates affect the business? Not really. What affects this, this industry, not just Camping World, but Thor, is the availability of credit. The availability of credit. 
And so you put the RV business and the housing market, the car business and the housing market together, right. and you got the RV business. I got it. Okay. And so we, that's what made a difference. One last question. On your website, you really detail what I think, because my daughter does glamping. And yep. You've really got the people understanding. It's a zeitgeist. It's a lifestyle. That's right. Well, right. It's a lifestyle. And, and what we're ultimately, Jim, trying to do is find the millennial. The millennial who doesn't want to go in their father's Oldsmobile or their father's motorhome. They want to go in a smaller unit, a lighter unit. They want to pull it with their Prius. And we've made a concerted effort through Gander to enter that market. Well, look, I, I think the longer term view is clear. A doubling of the number of dealerships would be gigantic. And business is good right now. Look, we had the trade show this last right? weekend in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Uh, sales seem good, and so yeah, we feel good. That's about. what I look at. That's Marcus Lemonis, chairman and CEO of Camping World, who just bought 25,000 shares for the view that he just articulated right here on the show. Man, money's back here for the break. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.